This is part two of our lecture series on solving trigonometric equations, and these examples will involve factoring, so I want you to think about taking out greatest common factors and factoring trinomials to help you understand what we're doing in this particular series. In this example, we have cotangent x times cosine squared x equals 2 times cotangent x. Because we have terms with x on both sides of the equation, I will need to move the term 2 cotangent x to the left side so that all of the terms that have x are gathered together on one side of the equation. When I do that, I'll have cotangent x times cosine squared x minus 2 times cotangent x equals 0. So now we can think of this as Different terms, sometimes students look at cotangent, cosine, cotangent all together, get really confused on what to do. You may be feeling that right now. So let me show you a way to think about this that may help you see something that you wouldn't ordinarily see. Suppose I let W equal cotangent X and I let Z equal cosine X. Then what I'm really looking at from this equation is w z squared minus 2w equals 0. So hopefully you can see that substitution, that cotangent becomes w, cosine squared becomes z squared, and minus 2 cotangent becomes minus 2w. Now think to yourself, how would I solve this equation? Well, what I would do is I would factor out a common factor of w, and I have w times z squared minus 2 equals 0, which is exactly what's going to happen in this case. We're just going to go back and make some substitutions for our original trig functions. So now by factoring out cotangent, I have cotangent x times cosine squared x minus 2 equals 0. Whenever I have two factors multiplied together and their product is zero, the zero product property tells me that either one of those factors or both of those factors were zero. And since we don't know which one, we set them both equal to zero. So I have one expression that says, or one equation that says cotine, cotangent x equals zero or cosine squared x minus two equals zero. If we look at the one on the right, we have something where cosine over sine would have to equal zero. And that's only going to happen when cosine is zero. So if we think about all the places from zero to two pi where that happens, for cotangent that happens when x is pi over two or when x is three pi over two. Now if we deal with this equation on the other side, cotan cosine squared x minus two equals zero, Adding 2 to both sides, I would need cosine squared x to equal 2, which means cosine x would have to equal plus or minus square root of 2. And there's nowhere on our unit circle where that occurs. It's outside of the range of cosines since the square root of 2 is 1.41 and the maximum value of cosine is 1. So for this one, this has the empty set or we say no solution for that particular equation. So we're only working with the equations that we get for solving cotangent to be zero. Notice that the solution we have here only works when we're on the interval from zero to two pi. And if I want a more general solution, I'll put those in green as I did on the last video lecture. Notice that this is a difference of two pi over two which is the same as pi. So for the general solution, I can write x equals pi over 2, and I can get back to 0 for cotangent every pi radius after that. So I write this as pi over 2 plus pi n, and as long as n is an integer, then I have my general solution. And again, that's representative whenever I'm asked for general solutions in the range of, zero, of negative infinity to infinity. If I'm asked for a range of 0 to 2 pi, let's fix this so that it is really including 0 but not including 2 pi. 
So for this solution, x can be pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 if we want to stay between 0 and 2 pi. Or I can go pi over 2 in every pi radians after that. So pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. I can also go backwards as well. Okay, let's take a look at this one. We have 2 times sine squared x plus 3 times cosine x minus 3. Notice here that we have two different trig functions represented. And we also have a constant term. So this is really a trinomial. The only issue is we have technically different variables in that we have different functions in sine squared and cosine. So we want to change sine squared into something that is connected to cosine. And being that this is sine squared, you should be thinking Pythagorean identity. So we can write this as 2 times 1 minus cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. Then do the, some distributive property here. We have 2 minus 2 cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. Combine like terms with the 2 and negative 3. And then we have negative 2 cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Now, this next step, very rarely do we like the leading coefficient to be negative. So I'm just going to multiply everything through by negative 1. And we'll have 2 cosine squared x minus 3 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. So now I have a trinomial that I want to factor in efforts of solving. You can think of this as 2x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0. And that should help you to see the pattern that we're going to use in order to factor this left-hand side. And so in factoring this, I will have 2 times cosine x minus 1. I just noticed a mistake up top. When I multiplied everything through by negative 1, I forgot to do it for the negative 1 here, so this should really be a positive 1. And so now when I factor, I have 2 times cosine x minus 1 multiplied by cosine x minus 1. And this is similar to looking back here at 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. If I were to factor this, I would have 2x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0. And so that's connecting right back here with cosine x. Now, again, I apply the zero product property, and I set each one of these equal to 0 separately. 2 times cosine x minus 1 equals 0, or cosine x minus 1 equals 0. So here I would need cosine x to equal 1 half. And if I think about, again, places where that can happen, that can happen at pi over 3. That could also happen at 5 pi over 3. On the right side, I'm looking for places where cosine x equals 1. And that happens only at 0. And I know you may pick up that it would happen at 2 pi as well, but we are restricting our answers to be between 0 and 2 pi, including 0, but not including 2 pi. So these are the general solutions. I apologize, not the general solutions. These are the more specific solutions if we want to stay between 0 and 2 pi, not including 2 pi. If I want more specific solutions, then I would need to think about how often these repeat. So I would have x equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi n, 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And then how often am I going to get back around to 0? Well, that's going to happen every 2 pi radians. So I can call this just 2 pi n. And even if n is 0, I get 0. So this is all, of course, assuming that n is an integer. And that gets us general solutions on the domain of negative infinity to infinity. The last example in this factoring series, we have cosine x plus 1 equals sine x. 
And we're looking at this and there's nothing that directly relates sine and cosine that we would use to help us factor. Remember, this is about factoring techniques. So I know that sine squared and cosine squared are related. So maybe I could square both sides. And then I can make some substitutions based on Pythagorean identities to help me out. Now, square in the left-hand side, this is a binomial. So I would have cosine squared, squared x plus 2 times cosine x plus 1. And on the right-hand side, this equals sine squared x. Now, since I have two cosines on the left side and one sine on the right side, I think it would be smart if we change sine squared to something related to cosine. So I can rewrite this as cosine squared x plus 2 times cosine x plus 1 equals 1 minus cosine squared x. And so now as I start to shuffle everything to the left side, preparing to factor, some wonderful things are going to happen for us. First, when I add cosine squared to both sides, I end up with 2 cosine squared x. The 2 cosine x does not change. But when I subtract 1 from both sides, the constant term disappears, and so I'm left with a 0 on the right-hand side. Now, if I take a look at these two terms, 2 cosine squared x and 2 cosine x, I do have a common factor of 2 cosine x. So I will factor that out, and what I'm left with is cosine x plus 1. So 2 times cosine x times the quantity cosine x plus 1 equals 0. I'm back to multiple factors being multiplied together, their products being 0. So I set each, set each factor equal to 0. I can treat 2 cosine x as one factor. So I have 2 cosine x equals 0, or cosine x plus 1 equals 0. So now when I solve, divide both sides by 2 for the left equation, I have cosine x equals 0. And we saw that that happens whenever x is pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. The right equation, I have cosine x equals negative 1. That happens whenever x is pi. So those are my solutions if I'm going to stay on the interval 0 to 2 pi. For more general solutions, I need this to happen at x equals pi over 2 plus pi n, where n is an integer. So if I add 2 pi over 2, I end up at 3 pi over 2, and it's going to happen every 90 degrees, every 270 degrees. And so this general equation gets to that point. However, I also have a solution that happens at pi and every 2 pi radians after that. So again, n here has to be an integer. And this is assuming that we're working on a domain of negative infinity to infinity. So the purpose of this video lecture was to give you some strategies when you need to factor. There's one more series that just deals with just some little odd things that we can do to help us solve trigonometric equations. I hope that this was helpful, and remember you can always email me with any questions that you have. Until next time.